Hey, good morning. It's Ken Himmler again. And I want to talk to you this morning about the upcoming changes in Social Security. And the reason I want to put this out in a video is I see the emails that are coming into our financial planning and retirement planning team. And I'm getting and seeing a lot more questions on should I take Social Security or not early. Now, you'll see a lot of, let's say, uh, propaganda that's out there. And a lot of that propaganda is created by annuity salespeople and insurance salespeople. You will see a lot of information out there that is purported to come from fiduciaries or financial planners or even financial advisors. I just want to give you a heads up and a warning. This is not necessarily accurate information. There is an annuity sales trick to get people to delay Social Security. And what they do is they sell an annuity to backfill the period of time from the time that you are eligible for Social Security until the maximum deferral period, which is now 72 or 70 years old. So the problem I have with that is it doesn't really look at the true mathematics or the calculations. Now, while I'm not going to get on this video today and tell you about what you should do, here is what I am finding when I'm reviewing hundreds of social security analysis that our team of financial planners are performing. What I am finding is that the current value of taking social security now outweighs the delay and it's happening at about 85 to 90 percent of the time. So to start, if you're looking for a short answer of I absolutely should take social security early or I absolutely should take it until I uh, the, the maximum period of time at age 70. I can't tell you which one is actually right for you. What I can tell you is that every time you, any kind of financial decision should be done with calculations, meaning somebody should be calculating this and there should not be an agenda to sell you something like an annuity. There should be hardcore calculations. Now, some of you might step back and go, well, I don't understand. Why, why what, what is the difference? who could benefit by taking it early and who could benefit by delaying it. I'm going to categorically give it to you, but again, I'm going to implore you, get a calculation done. And if you're getting it done for free, you have to question that to begin with. If some person says that they're a financial planner, financial advisor, and they're going to do that calculation for you for free, I wouldn't put any value in it because they're going to try to sell you something. So I can tell you we don't do it for free. We charge just like you would pay to have a tax return done, we charge for a pure Social Security analysis, which then you can depend upon that information being completely accurate because we don't have any agenda to sell you something. We're charging you by the hour to do it. So here is where Social Security sometimes benefits you by taking it early or it benefits you by maybe taking it a little later. So let's take a look at the two different parts. There is what's called earliest retirement eligibility. Now you might, depending upon what year you were born, take it as early as 62, but there's a slide up scale based upon the year that you were born of when you could take Social Security and what that amount would be. So these annuity salespeople promote the idea that, look, if you wait until age 70, look how much more you could get. And that's because the growth rate is between seven to eight percent on the deferral but there's caveats with this and here's the big caveat if you wait until age 70 we utilize what's a calculation called a break-even period of time what that means is that all that money that you would have potentially lost between 62 and 70 is a lot of cash and if you waited until age 70, that cash that you lost out on has what's called a break-even period of time. You have to catch up with all the money that you've lost out on. So what is that break-even period today? Well, it has helped that interest rates have gone up quite a bit. That break-even period of time was hitting about age 84 to 86. Now it's hitting about age 81 to age 82. But again, that is solely dependent upon interest rates 
and what we can compute an estimate of future growth on that money would have been and what it's going to take you to get it back. So it really depends on your attitude towards things too. If you believe what the government is saying that by the year 2035, Social Security will be bankrupt and that's the path that they're on, what will they then do? Will they then reduce the amount that they're giving you? Will they then take back some Social Security? We've seen some of the political pundits that have said, uh, you know, if you're earning over X number of dollars per year, you still have to pay into Social Security, but you will no longer be eligible for Social Security. Or what they're doing now is the other proposal is tax you up to $400,000 on Social Security. Or there's another proposal in there that says, right now, if I look at these uh, earning limits, in 2025, you can earn up to $176,000. And remember, when you pay into Social Security, you are paying half, your employer is paying half. So Social Security is 12.4%, 6.2% you pay, 6.2% your employer pays. So you only pay that up until, up until you get to $176,000 per year. Above that, you stop paying for Social Security. So when we look at when you should take it, and let's say you took it at age 62, and you're gonna take a greatly reduced amount of money each, each month. However, if you calculated, let's say, I'm gonna use an example here. Let's say you took in $2,000 per month and that's $24,000 in a year. And the estimates were that if you waited until age 70, let's say that you'd be eligible for, let's just say for the heck of it, the maximum, which right now is going to be, let me find it here, 30, uh, actually 2025, it's gonna be uh, $4,018 per month. So let's, say for the heck of it, you could double your money. So by the age, you wait eight years, so you lose out on $24,000 per year, almost $200,000. If you included what you could earn on that money, probably closer to about $250,000. So between the ages of, say, 62 and 70, let's just say for this example, you lose out you could have gotten that quarter million dollars. And you want to wait to get $4,000 per month. But here's the problem. Social Security does not have a death benefit per se. Now, if you die and your spouse gets a, cha a choice, assuming you're married at least 10 years, they get a choice of the higher of either half of yours or theirs. But technically, there's not really a death benefit. So conclusively, you could live until age 70 and you've deferred your Social Security. You now take your first check and you die. It's all gone. You've taken that risk. So let's add up the risks. Social Security bankrupt by 2035. You defer and day later you die. That all has been gone. Third thing is, let's just use that same assumption. You take the, the payment at age 62, but you saved the quarter million dollars. Now let's just say you banked it. You didn't spend it, you banked it. Now when you die, age 70 and a day, at least your family has that quarter million dollars. Now th that doesn't exclude the fact that your spouse is still eligible for that 50% of yours or theirs, whichever is greater. It just means that you've lost out on a quarter million dollars. Now, sometimes you might have what's called an earning penalty. This just simply means that you earn more than what they limit and then they penalize you. So here's an example of this. Let's, uh, let's look at 20, oh, let's, let's look at 2025 here. Okay, so you can earn in 2025 a total of, let's find it here, uh, under full retirement age, $23,000. That's it. For the amount that you owe, earn over $23,000, you lose 50% of your income benefits. So if you got two grand a month 
and let's say that you were over the limit by, call it $24,000, half of $24,000 is 12 grand, $1,000 a month. So if you were, if you were supposed to get $2,000 a month on Social Security, but you were earning $24,000 over the limit or a total of $47,000, you're going to lose $12,000 of your Social Security benefit. So this might be some of the cases where, and in a remote, and I don't have statistical proof on this, but I would probably tell you two to three out of 10 people, when we do these calculations, we get them to wait. Now that doesn't mean wait until 70. Remember there's three points. The first point is early retirement. The second point is full retirement. And the third point is the longest period, which is age 70, that you can wait and get a bump up in waiting, a deferral. So it's typically what most people think of age 62, age 65, and age 70. Now that may not be the case for you, depending upon what year you were born. So let's just summarize this up. So you can get rid of all the hype and media out there that tells you to do one thing or the other. I mean, if you turn on any of these financial gurus, they're, they're giving you an absolute. They're saying you should always, whatever it is, wait until 70. You should always take Social Security early. While the statistics are cited on one way, which is take it early, it doesn't mean that that's for everybody. You might be one of those two or three out of 10 that you should wait. But let's summarize this down into what you can do next. Absolutely get a full Social Security calculation done. Don't depend upon these internet calculators. They do not work. They will give you inaccurate information. And do not try to save a penny and lose a dollar. So if somebody says to you they will do a full Social Security calculation and they're going to charge you $250 to $500, for goodness gracious sakes, pay them. It's like paying a really good accountant to make sure that you don't get audited or in trouble with the IRS. Pay the fee. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars at risk. And you can't, and don't take the simple, fast, cheap way out by doing these online calculators. Now, if you could show me, and I review this all the time, if you could show me a online calculator that does the accurate job and walk somebody through it, absolutely, I'd say, you know, save your 250 to 500 dollars. I review these all the time, and I've not seen yet one single one that actually gives the accurate information. When we do our calculations, and then you go online and you see what everybody else is doing with these free calculators, they are so far off because they're not really doing your tax returns. They're just kind of giving you a future value, present value estimate. So number one, get it done. Do the calculation. And if things, if you had the calculation done a year or two ago and something major league has changed, then get a new calculation done. Again, do not try to save a penny when you can lose a dollar. And with that in mind, keep on, keep on this channel and please go ahead and subscribe so that you know when I release new information because as things change within politics and economies, and especially with what's going on right now with our inflationary mess, our world and uh, <laughs> macroeconomics being a mess, please subscribe because I'm going to start releasing more information as time goes along that you can really use to help yourself.